Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, we've had a bunch of people write in asking me for an explanation of the post-production process. That is, for getting images from your camera into your computer and then out into the real world. Well, there's so much to talk about that we're going to squeeze this into two episodes. The first episode is all about getting images from the camera into the computer, doing all of our keywording, organizing, and choosing the winners. The second part is going to be taking those winners and getting them out to the real world. In fact, there's so much to talk about that we couldn't actually squeeze it into two episodes. So I want to talk to you about this book here. It's called the Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 3 Book for digital photographers. It's written by Scott Kelby, and this is the book that you should read if you want an in-depth dive into all of the steps that are required for getting a perfect post-production workflow developed. Well, let's start by talking about how to get our photos from our camera into our computer. Okay, let's start talking about how we get our images from our CF card into our computer and get those all organized and keyworded. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using Lightroom 3 on our Apple here. Now Lightroom 3 is terrific because you can use it on an Apple or a PC. It works really well with other Adobe applications, specifically Photoshop for round tripping. So you can take uh, photos from Lightroom over to be retouched and bring them back in and still do a bunch of things with them. Now there are, are alternatives to Lightroom. You can use uh, Apple's Aperture, which is a phenomenal application. The difference is it doesn't have the same interface with Adobe applications, although it does work with Photoshop, um, and it only works on an Apple computer. So we're going to be sticking with Lightroom, um, and that's the software that I've been using for years. I really, really love it. Well, the first thing I want to do is talk to you really quickly about a couple of things that you need to do when you first start using Lightroom. Um, and I'm going to go in here to Lightroom Preferences and show you something that is uh, really important. And on the general tab here, there's this import option, and I have this clicked where it says show import dialog when a memory card is detected. Now that is important, so when you throw in your memory card from your camera, it'll automatically open the import dialog, which is sort of what I like. Sometimes though, you might have Lightroom running and you're putting in cards uh, for other applications, maybe bringing in video or something else, and you might get a little bit annoyed at that import dialog popping up, and so if that happens, you can just unclick that. So I have it selected. Um, and then there's another thing that you might want to look at. This is the e external editing tab, and that tells you how the files are going to go over to Photoshop or uh, maybe a different image um, editor when you want to round trip those. We're going to be talking about that in part two of our post-production tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to close that. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to import all of our images. Now these were shot on a camera and I'm going to actually just plug these into my card reader. Now before I do that actually, let me talk to you a little bit about how I have all of this set up. I'm using a uh, laptop and I have an external drive. This is just a G Drive Mini. It's a terrific uh, little external hard drive. I'm using that because I'm going to be storing the photos. I'm going to take them from this card. I'm going to bring them and put them on the hard drive of my laptop and then I'm going to be making a backup at the exact same time to my external drive. That way I have two copies copies, one on my computer and one on my external hard drive, so that if for some reason the hard drive on my computer dies, I still have a copy of these photos on an external hard drive, and it's just a really big safety net. So that's why I have this open. I'm going to be showing you how to do this all automatically. So I'm going to plug this into my card reader here, and when I do that, um, this is going to read my card, and then it will automatically pop open the import dialog box. Now, if that doesn't happen on your computer, check to make sure that you have it set up correctly, or you can just click the import button, and you're going to get a dialog that looks something like this. Now, what this is going to do here, on the left-hand side, it asks you where the source is for the images that you want to import. So let's say we actually wanted to import from an external hard drive instead of the card. Well, there's the G Drive Mini. I could have clicked on that, or I could click on the uh, EOS Digital, which is this card here. Um, it's really nice. The other thing that's really cool is this Eject After Import. Make sure that's selected, because then, once your card is all done and you've used it, it ejects the card so you can safely remove it. You're not going to corrupt any of the files. So that's how I have that set up. So that's the, the source tab. Now the middle here, this is um, asking you which photos you want to import. Now I have it just selected all photos. 
And so we can go down here and you can see that a bunch of these photos have checkboxes, in fact, all of them. So if there was one picture you just didn't want to import, you could deselect that checkbox. Um, or you could just say, you know what, I don't want to select uh, any of them except for maybe one. And so you can sort of pick and choose which photos come in from the card. Or you can say, you know what, just new photos. And so if you had a bunch of photos that you'd already imported, you could say, hey, um, ignore all the ones that we've already imported. Just give me the new ones. And so there's some different choices there. I really love that because sometimes I forget to erase the photos off my card. And so Lightroom automatically figures that out. Now at the very top here, there's something that's really important. You need to, uh, to explain to your card or to your computer how you want those photos to come into Lightroom. So you can copy them as DNG, which is actually translating them to a new digital negative. It's Adobe's digital negative. You can copy them so it leaves your uh, photos on the card and brings them over to your hard drive. You can move them so it actually lifts them from your, hard, or your card and puts them on your hard drive. So now you don't have them on your uh, card, which some people like to do. So that way when they put their card back into their camera, there are no photos there. Um, or you can just add them which is saying, hey, take it from your external hard drive and add them, but don't uh, move anything around, which is, which is sort of nice. So a lot of options there. We're going to keep this at copy. Um, so that's what we have in the middle format. Now it's asking me on the right-hand side, it's saying, where the heck do you want to put these files? Now this is where we have a lot of power. We want to spend some time because if you do this correctly, you can really, really um, optimize all of your libraries before you ever get in here to do manual keywording. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say where we want these to end up. Now we want to end these up in a file, uh, a folder that I already created. So it's on my desktop and it's in this little folder called Lightroom Demo, LR Demo. And you can see underneath this, this has some dates here. Now I wanted these to uh, be organized by date, by date format. So the nice thing is if I shot over several days, these aren't just going to go into my Lightroom demo folder that I created, but they're going to go in by date. And so there'll be a new folder for every single day that I shot. So that really helps me understand where those uh, files are. So that's how we're going to have that. Now the other thing we want to do here is we're asking, um, do you want to make a second copy? And we do want to make a second copy because we want those to go to our external hard drive. So we're backing things up as we go. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to choose a folder. So I'm going to go to my external hard drive here. I'm going to create a brand new folder. I'm going to call this Lightroom Demo Backup. And I'll create that and I'll choose it. And so now our photos are going not only into the desktop on my laptop, but this Lightroom demo backup on my external drive. So I'm making two copies all at the same time while I'm bringing this in. Okay, now the other thing is we're asking what keywords we want. And so I'm gonna put in here, I'm gonna say Tammy because she is the name of our model. And uh, we'll do some other keywording in the future. There's another thing that's very important and this is this metadata drop down box here. Now I've got some presets set up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new preset so you can sort of see what we're doing here. Now what happens is um, I can use these presets in the future. So every single time I bring in files, I can apply these presets and it will add things like the copyright information, the creator, um, all kinds of details that I want on every single file. So I'm going to go in here and create a new one. And I'm going to uh, make this Mark um, Fancy Demo. That's what we'll call this. And what we'll do here is we're going to be adding some IPTC content. IPTC content are, uh, th this is data about your files that you can look at later on. So a year, two, three, five, ten years later, when you're looking back to your files, you're like, what was the name of the model? Where was this shot? Who created it? Is this copyrighted? Do we have a model release? All that stuff can be added in IPTC data. So I'm going to create this. I'm not going to add any headlines or categories because we're going to do that later. I'm just going to put in here my copyright status. So I'm going to say copyright 2010 Mark Wallace because that's very important. Uh, what's the copyright status? Well, it's copyrighted. That's important. Uh, usage terms, I'm not going to put those in now because that depends on how much people have paid. What's the uh, URL? So I'll say as yeah, www.markwallacephotography.com, etc. So you can put in many, many different things. The creator, the uh, image date, there's all kinds of stuff that we can put in here. And so it's really robust. And once you have that created, you can use it over and over and over. So I'll create this. And now you see that my metadata is dropped down here. So all of these files are going to have all that copyright information, um, which is important. Actually, I'm going to edit this really fast. So I'm going to edit this preset because I forgot one thing that's very, very important. And this is the creator. So I'm going to say Mark Wallace 
and my creator address is 123 Anytown and my city is Anytown etc and this is in uh, New York let's say New York etc so we have all this kind of stuff in here my email is um, askmark at adorama.com so it's all in there we can have the website we can have titles and everything so I'm gonna uh, say I'm done do you want to save this yes save that okay now when we get these all in this will make sense so we have everything set up so we're bringing our cards in or our images in we're adding some data to those we're backing them up to two different places so we have everything done so now I'm going to say import and those photos are going to start rolling in to Lightroom and we're going to let those come in and then we're going to show you what we do with them afterwards okay and now with the magic of editing all of those photos just are in our uh, computer and so we're ready to go now the thing is the um, when you're backing up to an external hard drive it does take a little bit longer to bring in your photos than just copying them straight to your hard drive so just be aware of that if you think things are a little bit sluggish on a laptop or something when you have an external hard drive it takes a little bit longer okay now we have all of our pictures in Lightroom now the cool thing is I might be showing you some things and just hitting shortcut keys um, so to make sure you don't get lost on that if you don't know the shortcut keys just go to help and then you can say library module shortcuts and there are all of the shortcut keys so if you're in Lightroom and I say go to full screen and you're like hey how did you do that you can go to your library shortcuts to see that okay so the first thing I'm going to do here um, is I have I'm going to bring up my toolbar here and shrink my thumbnails just a little bit so we can see more of these there we go okay um, now we have some really neat things so we have all the photographs that we have imported here now if we had many many more photographs so let's say I, I did another session in the afternoon and imported some more well the previous import would just be the ones we just imported and the all photographs would be everything that we'd imported in all time so we might have 500 photographs and the previous import would only be 150 so that's sort of how that works okay now what we need to do here is we need to start uh, doing our keywording and organizing and selecting but let's look at something really quickly you'll notice that um, when I click on any of these photos on the right hand side here you can see that there's already a keyword in there which is Tammy that's the one that we put in while we were importing and so the nice thing is when you're importing photos there's a lot of power in that process you can add a bunch of keywords you do your automatic backup and you can add your IPTC data and that can save you hours of processing so when I zip down here you can see that I have a file name I have my JPEG image which goes along with my raw file we also have our copyright status it says copyrighted the job creator we could have put in a bunch of other things in here but you can see that there's a lot of data that we put in just at the import and we did it sort of quickly so if you spend some time during the import process you have massive amounts of data that you can use and then sort by uh, in the future so let's talk about some other things that we're going to do here so um, one of the things that we have here is this x-ray color checker passport we're going to talk about that in part two to uh, calibrate our color um, but what we want to do is we want to sort of organize our photos so I'm going to go here and select this first photo here and I want to add some keywords so this is Tammy but she's in a red dress so I'll type in red dress and I'll type in uh, brunette and maybe tall but I can put in a bunch of different things here okay now that I have all this uh, information that I put in for the first photo I can apply that to all these other red dress photos so I'll go in here I'll select the very first one then I'll go down here to the end of these I'll hit shift and then you can see over here that some of these things have a little asterisk on those so brunette and red dress and tall and that means that some of the photos have those keywords but not all so I want all of them to have that so instead of typing them over and over and over or copying and pasting I can just click sync metadata and when that pops up it's asking me well what do you want to sync what do you want to copy over and so I can go down here and I can say uh, we'll just do the keywords or I can just say check all that are filled in other words if I've added anything to any photo then bring all of those and so that's what I'm doing here and when I say synchronize then whammo it brings those all over and so now you can see that any of these red dresses that I select they have that uh, those keywords so you can keyword hundreds of images really really quickly and there's a lot of other keywording tools that we don't have time to show you but what we want to do originally is just keyword some of that stuff so now we have that done what we want to do is we want to um, do something I like to call stacking and I like to call it that because that's what it's called but I'll select all of the photos that are from the red dress and then we're going to go in here and I'm going to go to library uh, and then what I can do is 
I can go in and I can, I'm sorry, into photo and I can say stacking and I'll say group into stack. And then this thing happens where it goes zoop. It makes that, doesn't make that funny noise, but I like to do that. And then what happens is you can see that there are two little bars on the side of these red dresses and there's a little badge that says 31. And what that means is all of the red dress photos are now stacked on top of each other. And so when I'm looking at a bunch of photos, I can group them by maybe the dress or the pose or whatever. And if I want to see all of those, I just click on this right hand bar and they pop right out or I can click again to collapse. So that allows me to really quickly go through a photo shoot. So I'm going to stack the rest of these photos by uh, wardrobe and then we'll go in and we'll start choosing our winners. So I'm going to zip in here and start doing this. Okay, I've stacked all of the major sections of this photo shoot into stacks. And before we get through with this, I want to show you something else that's really powerful. We actually had some lighting setups that we were doing. So Kelsey Hazelwood, our producer here, was helping me figure out some lighting stuff. And so what I did was those are actually on the card because I took pictures. We don't really want those in this catalog. So I'm going to select all of those photos. And then what I'm going to do is I want to mark them as rejected. So I can do that by hitting X. And once I do that, they have this little flag that says, ah, we don't want to have these in the catalog. And the cool thing is I can then later come in and I can hit uh, command delete or control delete, I believe. And I can say, let's just get rid of all the rejected files. And I'll say delete from disk. And just like that, those are gone. And so we don't have to worry about them anymore. I've got some here that we did of Tammy that were just sort of um, getting things set up. So the same thing, I want to reject those. I'm going to save these for some other things. But you can see down here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different setups that um, we want to go through. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here into this stack, which is all of the uh, shots of Tammy in a red hat. You can see when I, exp uh, when I expand that, you can see those. And we want to go through there and we want to pick the ones that are the winners. So I'm going to open up this first one here and it's all off because it was the first shot. So I'm going to hit X. That's rejected. I'll go to the next one by hitting my right arrow key. This one again, it's not good. It's got some horrible things in the background. Reject reject. So, okay, now we're starting to dial this in and I'll just start going through here, that other one, reject that. Um, we can start looking through these pretty darn quickly and just seeing, well, which ones do I like? So I'll zip through here and I'll say, okay, you know what, that one I like. I'm just sort of picking these at random. Oh, I like it when she's smiling. I'll pick that one. And so we can just go through here and sort of see which ones we like. So I'm going to pick one more here. And uh, so I'll pick that one. Now, when I go back to my, um, just on my grid here, you can see that some of these have little um, uh, icons next to them. So what I can do then is I can go up here to my attribute, click that, and it says, how do you want to sort these? And I'll sort them by my flag. And there you go. There's only three out of that photo shoot that are showing up. So then I can go in and start playing with those even more to figure out which one of those is the best one. So I'm going to use something called survey mode. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kick out the side panels here by hitting shift tab. And that gives me some more screen real estate. I'm going to get rid of my toolbar by hitting T. And then I'm going to make sure I've selected all three of these. So I'm going to hit the first one. Whoops. Hit shift, hit the last one, hit N. And it brings all three up side by side. Then I can go in here and say, you know what, I really don't like this one. So I'm going to hit unflag. Now we have two together, and I sort of like this first one, so I'm going to unflag this. So now I have my winner, and that's the one I want to edit and do some stuff in post-production. Well, that gives you a really brief overview of getting images into Lightroom, doing all of your keywording, synchronizing your keywording, grouping things into stacks, and then once you have them in stacks, going through and picking the winners. And so we have this uh, library ready to go for getting these things ready for output. And that's what we're going to be doing in part two of our Lightroom demo, is once we have everything organized, well, now what do we do? How do we get it out of the computer, onto the web, or onto a different device, or maybe in print, etc. So stay tuned for part two for more Lightroom information. Well, those are some of the steps that are involved in getting the images from your camera into your computer and making sure they are all organized. Remember, we weren't able to go into a deep dive, so check out Scott Kelby's book, the Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 3 book for digital photographers for more information, as well as visiting the online learning center at Adorama for more tips on using Lightroom in post-production. 
Or remember, if you have questions about photography, you can send those to me at askmark at adorama.com. Well, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week for part two of our post-production workflow. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.